Hey, shalom, shalom, Israel. We're gonna, um, we gonna, we gonna do something, man. That's real special out here, man. We, in, in, in the Israelite school in UPK, we raise up men, man. We raise up men of war, man. We raise up men to come out here and battle, and battle and hit these streets hard, man. That's right. And tell the truth that comes out of the Bible, man. That's right. You understand? Uh, Makata's out. Come on, post. Say something. You want to say something about this, brother? Kind, you got to come around here, brother. You got to come around this way. You know what I'm saying? This brother, this brother, doing something real special, man. This, this brother, every brother in the Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge goes through a process, man. You understand? It's not like the Christian church where you, you know, you sit on the, you know, you sit on the toilet one day and you figure out, oh, I've been called by the most high and I want to preach the word of God. Hallelujah. It ain't nothing like that, man. You understand? Each one of us is trained, extensively trained to teach this Bible, man. Goes into extensive training to learn the scriptures, the proper history, to break down these scriptures and learn the proper knowledge that it takes to teach someone else these scriptures and the proper knowledge that it takes to come out here and risk our lives to wake up brothers and sisters, man. And we come through this school and we get and we earn ourselves a name. And this brother earned the name of Makataza, man, which means to strike through. And this brother came into this school striking, striking hard. Right, this right. brother struck through, and he struck through the school, man, and he made a, made a, made a presence in the school off the gate, man. You understand? He made such an impact in the school that, uh, look, look here, this brother is, is moving mountains already. And this brother has, has, is getting raised up today in the school and has, has passed his officer's test, has passed his certification to be able to teach this, these scriptures, man. And today, Makataza officer, Makataza Salakia, is getting the oil poured on his head. You gotta step this way, brother, as, as a, a signal. And getting this oil poured on your head is a signal of being set aside by the Most High to do this prestigious job. You understand? This is an honorable job to be able to do in the, in, in, in the presence of a world that's, you know, filled with wickedness. You understand? So, say, oh, come on, come on. So, so as we, we pray this special prayer over this brother, you know what I'm saying? This brother's getting raised up. So he's no longer Trooper Makataza. He is now Officer 50 Makataza in the Israelite School right. of Universal Practical Knowledge. Yahweh, what we just said was Yahweh bless thee and keep thee. Yahweh make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Yahweh lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh Shah, bless, heal, shield, and protect. With that being said, this brother is an officer of 50. Now you got the oil on your head? Come up here and blaze this place. I'm going to show you how important we really are on this planet. Because our people, we don't love ourselves. And that's one of the biggest problems that we have as a people. And the fact that we don't love ourselves, we 
take it out on our brother. And that's why we kill our brothers in the streets. And it kills me every day that you have to sit there and watch our brothers destroy ourselves when we already getting destroyed by this goddamn oppressor. That's right. Start bringing that out, brother. Call him a This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art a holy people. Thou art a what? Thou art a holy people. A what? Holy people. Let me tell y'all something. Holy means separate. That's right. The Most High made us a separate people on the face of this earth. Right. And it ain't nobody on the planet, on this planet earth, that's like us. And you can't tell me one race of people who's just like blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Not one. Not Chinese, Japanese, nothing. We can run everything if we just did what we were supposed to do in the first place. That's right. And I'm gonna, we're going to keep bringing it out. Go ahead. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. Unto who? The Lord thy God. Unto who? The Lord thy God. Keep going. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people. To be what? To be a special people. To be what? To be a special people. So at first he chose us to be holy, which is separate, and he chose us to be a special people. Yeah, so not only are we holy and we separate, but we supposed to be special. So you know how you, you might have a couple of things in your house, but there's always something in that house that's, that's special to you. It's always something that you put aside that you don't even want nobody to touch. Right, that's right. You always got that, you might be a parent, you might have, you know, two or three kids, but you got that one. That one is special to you. That's that one right. is just like you. That's right. That's, the, that's your special child. Right. That's us. That's the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's right. Keep going. Unto himself. Unto who? Unto himself. Unto the most high. So we special unto the most high. He loves us and nobody else. Keep bringing it up. Above our people. Above who? All people. Who? All people. We above everybody. That's right. He chose us to be above everybody. And the fact that we on the bottom is because we disobedient. But we about to change that. And the ISUBK under Commander Junior Yohanna, we can be on the top. That's right. Let me tell you something. When I came into this brotherhood, when I found the ISUBK, I ain't never felt nothing like this. Right, right. And it's because now I feel like I'm on top. I feel like our people can be on top. Right. All we got to do is come together in this brotherhood and we'll be better than any Anybody on the, on the face of this planet. That's right. Keep going. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. They're upon what? Upon the face of the earth. Just America? On the, upon the face of the earth. In Japan? Upon the face of the earth. No, that can't be right. Say, say that one more time. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Above all people that are on the face of the earth. That's, That's right. right. That is, that you can't dispute that. And that's from the Holy Bible. That's from the book that you get out of that Christian church. That nasty, disgusting Christian church that y'all go to every Sunday and get lied to by that pimp called a pastor. That's right. And don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about because my family's full of them. Get me uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 1. Come on, God. And we're going to keep bringing out this truth. And we're going to learn today. 28 And we're going to learn today, I'm telling you. We aren't, we aren't just sought out for no reason. Everybody on this planet Earth knows that blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the best people that you can find to do anything. Absolutely anything. And that's why they downtrod us. That's why they keep us at the bottom so then they can force us to build their kingdoms. Right. So we can't build our own. But that's all about the change. It's going to change real soon. Go ahead. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass, so this is going to happen. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If thou shalt do what? Hearken diligently. Hearken diligently. That means that you need to listen diligently. That means you need to pay attention to what I'm about to say. So the Most High was telling us, pay attention and listen. If you do this, go ahead. Unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments. To do some of them. All his commandments. You can do one or two. All his commandments. And you can just keep sinning and do whatever you want. All his commandments. So if you do all his commandments, not some, not a little bit, but if you do all his commandments, go ahead. Which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high. Will set thee on what? Will set thee on high. On high. He's going to put us in a, a very high spot. 
Keep going. Above all nations. Above all nations? That can't be right. Say that again. Above all nations. Brother, are you reading the Bible? God you God. sure? God Read that again. Above all nations. Above all nations. Keep going. Of the earth. On the earth. There it is again. So that's two scriptures that says that not only are we a special people, but we will be above all people on the face of the earth. So that right there alone should let you know that God does not love everybody for one, and two, that black Hispanics and Native Americans are God's chosen people, and we will be the top people. Right. That's right. Keep going. Verse two, and all these blessings shall come upon thee. All these what? Blessings shall come upon thee. All these blessings shall come upon thee. So not only are we gonna be the people on high, the top people, the chosen people, but we also get blessed for it. Give me, a, give me Romans chapter nine and start at verse three. And we're gonna keep bringing out how special our people is. And I'm telling you right now, this right here is coming to an end real soon. If you haven't been watching the news, I'm telling you, this place is about to get destroyed. That's and right. it's all gonna be written in this in this book right here called the Bible. That's right. And it's, on, it's gonna be the most righteous thing that you've ever seen in your life. Right. Go ahead and read. Come on, come on. It's the book of Romans, chapter nine, verse three. Go ahead. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren. For who? My brethren. For who? My brethren. For, for his brother. Keep going. My kinsmen. So, so it wasn't for everybody. Paul was saying this about his brother, about his brothers, his kinsmen. So these are his kinfolk. You know how black people, we, we, we love our kinfolk. We go to them, them cookouts, we go to them family reunions. Well, Paul is saying the exact same thing. This is for his brothers. This is for his kinfolk. Keep going. My kinsmen, according to the flesh. According to what? According to the flesh. So again, this is his brothers, his kinsmen, according to the flesh. This is not everybody. These are the people who are related to him. Paul was from the tribe of Benjamin. These, these, he, the people he is talking to here, he's about to tell you right now. Keep going. Verse four. Who are Israelites? Who are who? Israelites. Who? Israelites. These are Israelites. These are the chosen people of God who he said are going to be on high above everybody on the face of this planet. The Most High is not playing in this book. He chose a people, and the book is only talking about that one people. Keep going. Right. To whom pertain to the adoption? To who pertain to what? The adoption. Man, that nasty, disgusting Christian church that y'all love to go to every Wednesday and Sunday in, in those homosexual choir practices. Right. In the Christian church, they teach you that everybody is adopted and can be adopted into the family. Right. They teach you a, a spiritual Israelite. Right. Ain't no such thing as no spiritual Israelite. That's right. Be of the flesh of an Israelite to be a spiritual Israelite. That's the all. They, it's criteria, and we just read it to you. Paul ain't talking to everybody, and he's not for everybody. He just told you he's for who? Who are Israelites? Who are Israelites? Keep going. To who pertain to the adoption? To who pertain to the adoption? Who pertain to the adoption? So we can come back in. Keep going. And the glory. And the glory. And the covenant. And the covenant. And the giving of the law. And the giving of the law. So you can't even get the covenants if you're not an Israelite. Right, right. This law ain't even for you if you're not an Israelite. That's right. So that tells you right now, we the ones who's not supposed to be homosexuals. Right. We the ones who's supposed to be on top and not to be on the bottom eating uh, eating roaches and, and shrimp and crab and lobster and all right. this other disgusting stuff that y'all try to make a, del a delicacy to us and make us pay $20 for a plate of what? Right. For a plate of pork chop? For a plate of worms? That's what y'all making us do? Keep going. And the service, service of the Most High. And the service of the Most High. So you can't even be in the service of the Most High if you are not an Israelite. That's so right. if you go to a Christian church and your oppressor is your pastor, you're lost. Because he can't be in the service of the Most High. Read that part again. Come on, come. Who are Israelites who pertain to the adoption? The adoption. And the glory. And the glory. And the covenant. And the covenant. Let me tell y'all something else. If this was said about any other group of people on the face of the planet, whether it be Japanese, Chinese, anything, 
they would absolutely love it and they would take this book and run with it. You know right. how we know? Because they already did it. Right. They already been lied to and told, hey, this book is for everybody. When he just told you it's only for God's chosen people, the Israelites. And the fact that we won't even accept what our father said lets you know who we are. Right. We, we are so disobedient, we won't even listen to the, our, our own words. So the Most High told us that this is for us and we want to give it to everybody else. But that shows you how destroyed we are and that's how much our oppressor has lied to us and made us think that we can give what's ours to everybody else. So now we have to live in their kingdoms. Right. We have to look at their skyscrapers here in Charlotte. Right. Where we built those skyscrapers. That's right. This place was built on the blood of blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. Right. And it wasn't built on nobody else. Keep going. And the giving of the law. And the giving of the law. And the service of the Most High. And the service of the Most High. And this is the last thing. And this is the most important, one of the most important things, because the whole scripture is important. But this is something that black Hispanics and Native Americans really need to pay attention to. And the promises. The what? Promises. The what? Promises. And the promises. Now, if that, if that don't do something to your soul as a black Hispanic Native American Indian, I don't know what will. Now for that brother any day of the week. And that's us yeah. under Commander Junior Hunter in the ISUBK. Yeah. We willing to die for these brothers, man. Every single brother that we got up here, we willing to die for them. And that's what we're trying to bring you into. All of Atlanta, we try to bring you into this brotherhood and this sisterhood so we can show you what real love is under Commander Junior Hunter. So we can show you what real love is that Christ was teaching. The real love that we learned and it's making us that give us that joy that Christ was just talking about. Read that verse again. Money as much as you can. Greater love. Have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. For his who? For his friends. Man, when you got so much love and when you got that friendship, when you got that brotherhood, there's no greater love than that when you would die for them brothers and sisters, man. And now again, that's what we got right here under Christ, under Commander Junior Yohanna, and the ISUPK. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you're not getting how important this is, man, I'm telling you, y'all gotta come in this school and feel this feeling. Right. right. It's love. You can't get no better feeling than this. Amen. Read that again from the top. The book of John, chapter 15, verse 13. Greater love have no man than this. That a man lay down his life for his friends. That a man that yeah, lay down his life for his friends. You can drop that. Give me uh even, even though I'm holding the camera, I'm still on the two, watching the run. And, the, and, and hey. we've been talking about brotherhood this whole time, or we've been showing brotherhood this whole time since we've been in Atlanta. But it's one, again, it's one thing that breaks this brotherhood up. And it's little things that causes divisions in this brotherhood. That's it. And if you come in here and the ISU became the commander, Junior Hunter, we can show you how to fix that demon. We can show you how to fix that problem. We'll never leave you. We'll never make, uh, uh, leave you hungry. We'll never leave you sleeping on the street. We gonna show brotherhood. If, if you gotta come and sleep, come, come to my house and sleep on my bed. God damn it. We something shit. We might even have a guest room. It's lucky. Like it. You know what I'm saying? You all you gotta do is just come in and, and just let us know. Come and so come in this brotherhood. Get a fly. Get get this love shown to you. You got that for me? And again, with this brotherhood, we would die for each other. I can't stress it enough. If you want a brotherhood that'll die for you. If you want brothers, again, we go through our whole life. Black men are warriors. Black men are warriors. We go through our whole life looking for, looking for a, a companionship of other warriors. That's why we join gangs. That's why we join Esau's military. And it's all because we, all we looking for is that, blo uh, that brotherhood that we got brothers that we can war with and they war for us. They adopt for us and we adopt for them. That's all we looking for. And Christ was trying to give us that. Christ is giving us that right now in the eyes should be care of the commander John Yohanna. Because we warriors, man. Right. And we trying to show you that we got, we found a home. Us warriors right here in this school is trying to show you that we found a home where we would die for each other and we would never forsake each other. That's what we learned under Commander Junior Yohanna in the eyes should be care. And if you don't want that, I don't know what to tell you, but I guarantee you, you look deep down in your heart as a black man, that's what you're looking for. And I'm telling you right here, it's here today in Atlanta. You got that for me? The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 1. 
And again, what we about to bring out right now is the little things that can break this brotherhood up. And it's so simple, man. Satan know how to, how, to, how, to, how to get us off our track. But I'm telling you right now, this goddamn oppressor is the devil that the Bible speaks of. That's right. And the way that you see Atlanta right now, how many, how many I, I mean, all you see out here is our nation. You see our nation homeless. You see our nation uh, uh, begging. We driving into Atlanta, you, you see uh, uh, our brothers and sisters sleeping under the bridge. That's right. right. And, and who's fixing that? It ain't T.I. and Killer Mike. Right. You understand? They too busy arguing over politics. Right. It ain't theft your dollars. It ain't TD snakes. Right. You understand? It's not. It's definitely not your Christian pastor. And a lot of people are starting to learn that. So now that y'all starting to learn that it's not your Christian pastor, and y'all coming out of that disgusting homosexual church, now you can come into this brother and sisterhood and get real love. That's right. You understand? That's right. Read it. The book of First Corinthians, chapter one, verse ten. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing. That you do what? That ye all speak the same thing. Let me tell you the difference between the ISUBK and anybody else. This is why we're not affiliated. It's because this brotherhood is unmatched. Right. We don't right. preach the same thing. Right. If we don't preach the same thing, we don't agree on the same thing. Right. How, how do I know what you're doing behind closed doors? I don't. We're not even in the same brotherhood. Right. But you want me to war with you. How do I know you don't love the enemy? Right. You understand? Well, when you come up in, under, under here, the only love we show is to our people. Right. That's the only people that we love. We don't love nobody else. Right. And you better be for damn sure we ain't gonna never love nobody else. You will never see another nation other than black, Hispanics, Native American Indians, the true Israelites, in this group, in this school, in this body, in this brotherhood. Because we are one. And we ain't gonna never let that fall. Keep reading. That ye all speak the same thing. So when you come into the school, one of the things we gonna do, same thing I'm saying, you gonna hit a... All the other brothers, everything's gonna come back to brotherhood. Why? Because we speak the same thing. Brotherhood is the most important thing to us. That's what the law was teaching us. That's our weapon to every other nation on this planet. But we can't do that if we're not even speaking the same thing, man. If we teaching a different doctrine and, and it's got you going off. When you come back under Commander Junior Hunter, get your counsel, you know, maybe take a little checking, get on all black, and you'll find out how important this brotherhood really is. You'll find out how strong this brotherhood really is in the ISBK. Keep going. And that there be no divisions. No what? That there be no divisions. No what? No division. No division. So no multiple denominations, no multiple churches. We all speaking the same thing and there's no division. That's right. We can come together. We got brothers here from North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Texas, New York. You can name any state and we here. Why? Right. Because there's no division in the eyes you became the commander general your honor. That's right. And that's true brotherhood right there. That's right. And we all speaking the same thing. We all damn near looking like, God damn it. We all dress alike. We all love our culture. We all love our people. Right. With the utmost love. We, not only do we just love our people, we also tell our people when they wrong. We'll tell our people when they right. And we'll also tell them to get their ass in class so they can learn how to be a better person That's under right. Christ. That's right. Keep reading. Start from the top. Now, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing. And ye all speak the same thing. And again, I can't stress this enough, man. Because it's so, again, the little things is so important. Something like that can break a whole group up, man. You see it all the time in the world. You see it all the time in the world. Groups get broken up. Gangs, gangs get broken up. Uh, uh, these drug cartels get broken up all over a mouth. All over because they don't speak the same thing. All because they don't believe the same thing. They not, they not striving for the same thing and they think they can come together, and they come together for a while, and then eventually it crumbles because it was built on sand, man. But when you come in here under, under, under Christ, under Commander General Yohanna, this house is built on stone, huh? This house is strong, this brotherhood is solid, and that's why we still here to this day. Keep going. 
and that there be no divisions among you. That there be no divisions among you. <laughs> so us as black, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, there's not supposed to be no division among us. It's not supposed to be multiple groups. It's, not, it's only supposed to be one. We're supposed to have one body. Matter of fact, uh, give me Ephesians chapter four, verse four. Start at verse four. Because it's only supposed to be one, man. That's right. It's only supposed to be one group, one body, one school, one doctrine, and we all supposed to be speaking the same thing, and that's brotherhood right there. That's right. And we and, and, and when you're doing that, that means that y'all connected and y'all in one mind all the time. That's that's one spirit right there. Right. And that's the spirit of one West. And that's why we still here to this day. Because the spirit of one West that our forefathers gave us and that commanding junior Han is passing down to us, again, that brotherhood will never falter. That brotherhood is solid. That brotherhood is on solid ground. And that brotherhood ain't going nowhere. And again, it's little things. Little things like thinking, oh, I can, I can think different on this topic. No, that topic's been proven in this school. So since it's been proven, just because you, you might feel a certain way, get out your feelings. Be a man about it. And go ahead and, and man up and, and join this brotherhood. Put on all black and do your thing. You got it? Go ahead. Book of B, chapter 4, verse 4. There be one body. Say again. There be one body. There is one body. And one spirit. And one, and one what? And one spirit. Start from the top. There is one body. So there's one body. It ain't no, uh, uh, there's multiple uh, leaders, you know, uh, and, and we gonna do our thing over here, y'all do y'all thing over here as well. No, what did, what, did the, what did the book say? There is one body and one spirit. And one spirit. Get that power and preach another hand. This thing up here. Shalom, Charlotte. We are the ISUPK of the Commander General Yohanna, coming out of 1 West 125th Street, Hall of New York. And we are not associated with any other Israelite group. We've been doing this since 1969, bringing out this truth. And today we're gonna bring out that it's color all in this Bible. And I ain't talking about just any color. I'm talking about the color of the brothers you see standing here with me today. In ISUPK, we teach the truth according to the Bible. And the truth is that Jesus Christ, the one y'all call Jesus Christ, was a black man. That man looked just like us standing up here. And we're gonna prove it today. Give me revelations. Chapter 1, the starting verse 13 for me. One of the biggest lies that this society has taught us as people of color is that God is not our color. Is that his son, Jesus Christ, is not our color. When in fact, Christ looked just like these men up here. Christ was, was probably darker than me. Christ had woolly hair. Christ had a beard. Christ kept all the commandments. Just about everything that the Christian that the Christian church told you about Christ, he was the exact opposite. When you see that that picture of that that oppressor with that long stringy dog hair, that's not Christ. That was not that powerful man back then who was leading five thousand men. That wasn't him. You got that for me, brother? All right, go ahead and read that for me. It's starting at verse thirteen. Revelations chapter one, verse thirteen. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. One like unto the Son of Man. So it's telling you right here, this is revelations. This is the revealing. It's about to show you exactly what Christ looked like. Now, the question that you should ask when you go into that Christian church tomorrow is why doesn't your pastor read this and, and explain this? Why was this so important that the prophets of old put this in our records? There's a reason for that. Keep going. Clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about the path with a golden girdle. So not only, not only is it about to show you what he looked like, it's telling you what he had on. And we, you know us as black, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we love gold. So we gonna have gold. Keep going. Chapter, verse 14. His head and his head were white like wool. White like what? 
white like wool. So it gives you a color and it gives you a texture. So he had hair like wool. He had nappy hair. He had hair like the men that you see standing over here. Keep going. As white as snow. As white as snow. So he had white hair. Keep going. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet unto fine brass. And his feet unto fine brass, which is a derivative of brown. Because this Bible was written in Old English. So if it's written in Old English, you have to go back and see what certain things mean. So when it says that his feet were like brass, it's, it's a derivative of brown. His feet were brown. Keep going. As if they burn in a furnace. As if they what? As if they burn in a furnace. So they were they were like brass as if they burned in the furnace. So they were black. Right. His feet were as black as my coat. Right. Like they were burnt. Now, my question is, is there anything, uh, let's say in history, because people try to say, you know, the Bible, the Bible is just a religious made up, you know, book about superstition and blah, blah, blah. Let's see if there's anything in history that might, you know, coincide with this. They might actually agree with this. Read this for me, brother. What, what he's about to read, there was a uh, a Jewish um, what's the word I want to use? Scholar. Thank you, brother. There was a, a Jewish scholar by the name of Flavius Josephus who has a lot of different writings who was actually uh, in the time of right after Christ died. And he's going to give a description of what Christ looked like. Let's see what he said. Start at the top. At the time also, there appeared a certain man of magic power. If it be me to call him a man. So of course in history and Christianity, they think that, you know, people use magic and, and powers and everything like that. But as we keep reading, it's going to tell you what the people who followed him said about him. Keep going. Whose name is Jesus, whom certain Greeks called the Son of God. But his disciples, but his disciples, keep going. But his disciples, the true prophet, called him the true prophet, who supposed to have raised dead persons to have cured all diseases. That's what his followers said about him. He was a true prophet who could raise dead people and cure all diseases. He wasn't some magical, mystical witch walking around. He was a true prophet of the Most High. Keep going. Both his nature and his form were human. For he was a man of simple appearance. Keep going. Mature age. Mature age. Black skin. What? Black skin. Say that again. Black skin. So Christ was black skin, according to this historian scholar, who was alive during the time of Christ. We just read out of the Bible in Revelations that Christ was like brass burnt in the furnace. So that's history and the Bible showing that Christ is black as my coat. Right, that's right. So why in the Christian church are we being told that Christ was some stringy haired dog looking uh, 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 homosexual looking man right. named Caesar Bourget. What, what What's the purpose for that? Why is this picture That's right. It's disgusting. Why is this picture right here the picture that the Christian church shows you of Christ when history and the Bible tells you otherwise? That's he right. does not have woolly hair and is, is not white he does not have uh, flaming eyes. Them are the softest eyes you ever gonna see in your life. Matter of fact, the whole picture, this is disgusting. The white man is goddamn devil that the Bible speaks of. The fact that he lied on our king and said that he looked like that instead of what history in the Bible says is disgusting. Those are eyes of a pedophile. That's right. And that's why when you go into the Christian church, you get molested. Right. Especially as a child, because the Christian church is full of child molesters. That's right. If right. you don't believe me, why is it always on the news? Right. right. Why did Bishop Eddie Long get, get caught with 
God knows how many children. Why do those Catholic priests have to go? They don't. Even, I can't even say they go bankrupt because they have their own accounts just to cover up the molestation that still that is so rampant. It still gets out. That's right. Right. If you go to New York now, especially to Harlem, they could tell you about how they used to see little boys leaving little black boys leaving the catholic church with new shoes because when they go in there they get molested and the priest will give them new shoes and everybody in the neighborhood knew about it now how disgusting is that that's your goddamn christian church don't put any man around me associated with anything that has to do with that christian church and, and recently he came out in dc in washington dc that these Catholic priests so like you. have codes on what child to molest. Now, how, how that you have to be a predator That's right. to That's do right. to do something like that. And and just to further prove how disgusting the LGBT is, they support pedophiles. If you don't believe me, you can look up the National Boy Lover Association of America. That is a that is a real thing. And the two founders of it, guess what? They're in the LGBT today. I tell you, it's disgusting, isn't it? And that's that's who y'all go and look at the Christian church every day, every Sunday, some of you every day, and y'all look at this stringy haired dog oppressor who was a who was a, 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 a homosexual himself when he was alive. It's disgusting. Matter of fact, give me uh, Acts 13 and 1. Because we're going to keep going into uh, uh, what these prophets and what, this, what, what our prophets and what our ancestors look like in this Bible. Because this Bible is our book. It's not anyone else's book. If you're a black, Hispanic, and Native American, come up here and get a flyer so we can show you your history in this book. You got that for me, brother? Go ahead and start reading for me. Acts 13, verse 1. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon. So there were prophets and teachers. And it's going to start naming them. And it's, and, and, and it's going to tell you what these men look like. And when it does, once again, I'm going to show you what this really means and what it's talking about. Because people try to twist things of, oh, that's not what it's really talking about. No, this is really what it's going to be talking about. It's talking about color. We're talking about color in this book. Keep going. As Barnabas and Simeon, that was called nigger. That was called what? Nigger. Go on, say, say, that, say that one more time. Niger. It was called niger. Now, why did they call the priests and prophets niger? Why was this man... Uh, 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 called Niger, this priest and prophet back in in, in uh, uh, antiquity called Niger. So, I mean, like anybody should do, you know, and should study and try to look this up. If you could, uh, give me the uh, Bible, the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. It's right there uh, by your foot, brother. We should we should just look it up and study. Let's just see what the what what the Bible Dictionary says. Right. Just to see if if it was talking about. Maybe, maybe it was talking about the, the country Niger. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was talking about some place in Africa. Maybe it was some, you know, African. You got that for me yet? It's all right. Take your time. It's, take your time. It's all right. It's in there. Trust me. And again, we are showing you color in the Bible because that thing that you see when you go into the Christian church hanging on everything, that is not Christ. That is not what the prophets look like. Those movies about Moses and you know the the so-called Jews in the movies, those aren't us. Right. We are the real Jews that the Bible speaks of. That's right. You got that for me, brother? Keep going. What's the what's the first thing that it says right beside it? Read the word and what it says right beside it. Niger. Black. What? Niger. Black. Black. Keep going. A surname of Simeon. One of the five prophets and teachers of the church at Antioch. Now that's not saying anything about a country in Africa. That's just saying black. It's saying that the prophets of old were black. That prophet that it named out was black. And you know the five men that, it was, that was with him was black. Uh, drop that for me, brother. 
and because we're going to keep going with this. Like I said, it's covered all through the Bible. And it don't just describe Christ and the prophets. It describes everybody in the Bible. Right. It really gets into it. Give me uh, Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. And we're going to get with the, what, what the description of the Most High was like. Because the Most High, you know, when, when you see them on, uh, on TV, you know, they show heaven. You know, it got one gate, which is not in the Bible. And then they show St. Peter sitting outside with some big notebook with names in it. Right. That's not in the Bible. And then, and, and, and then they show uh, uh, some, you know, oppressor with a, with a long white beard just walking around in heaven. And that's supposed to be God. That's not in the Bible. Let's see what the Bible says about the, about the Most High. Chapter 9. It's a lot. Because once again, we're going to see, see what the Bible actually says about the Most High. Because they, they, they try to tell you that this is not important. They try to tell you that this isn't important. If it's not important, then why, when the Renaissance era came in, they started painting all the pictures in Europe of the black prophet's uh -huh. white. That's right. If it's not important. Right. It has to be important. That's if it's right. not important, why every time you, you open a book or go into a, a Christian church, there's, there's pictures of white men everywhere. Right. If it's not important. It has to be important because every, and the first thing they tell you is, oh, well, we know uh, uh, Christ wasn't white. Then why are you painting him white? You have to explain that. You can't just do it. There's a reason for it. What does it say about the Most High? You got it for me? 7 9. Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. I beheld to the thrones were cast down. And the Ancient of Days did sit. And the who? The Ancient of Days did sit. So the Ancient of Days did sit, keep going. Whose garment was white as snow. Whose garment was white as snow. And the hair on his head like a pure wool. Like what? Like a pure wool. So there's that woolly hair again. So even right here, in the Old Testament, he got woolly hair. The Most High had woolly hair. So, so why do we keep getting these descriptions of some straight-haired uh, 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 white dog? I don't get it. Can anybody explain it to me? Give me, drop that for me, brother. Give me uh, Song of Solomon, one and five. Because we're gonna get it uh, again. We're just gonna keep bringing out what the prophets and, and our kings, our ancestors. We're gonna keep bringing out what they said that they looked like. What the Bible says they look like. There's a reason that this is in here, and there's a reason that they don't want you to read these verses. Because they, they were not the oppressor that you see walking around here. They weren't them. They didn't look like them, they didn't act like them, they didn't eat the same disgusting foods that they eat. You got that for me? Here we go, what is Psalm of Solomon, one and five. The Psalms of Solomon, Chapter 1, verse 5. I am black. I am what? I am black. It, it, it can't say that, brother. What's it say? I am black. Spell black. B-L-A-C-K. So if Solomon's saying he's black, if the New Testament said the prophets was black, if history is saying the prophets was black, if a, 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 what's the word again? A scholar. If a scholar... Uh, uh, that was alive during Christ's time was saying that Christ was black, then why is, is he white everywhere you go? Right. It makes no sense. Keep going. Unless somebody's trying to lie to you. Right. Unless somebody's trying to deceive you. Unless somebody's trying to, you. Unless somebody's trying to, deceive you. Unless somebody's trying to be the devil. That's right. Unless somebody's trying to keep you in slavery. Unless somebody's trying to continue to rule over you. Again, if you black Hispanic, please come get a flyer and we can show you who you are according to this Bible. Right, Keep straight. going, start from the top. I am black, but comely, but comely. I am black, but beautiful. That's what Solomon was saying. Keep going, he because he tells you how black he is. Keep going. Oh, ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar. As the tents of Kedar. If you go on Google, on your Google machine right now, and you look up the tents of Kedar, it will show you how black those tents are. And they're as black as this little book that I'm holding right now. The tents of Kedar, that's how, that is King Solomon 
that is David's son saying that he was as black as, as pavement. So if the revelations, now we've been through, what, three, is that three verses, brother? Three? So if, we, if we've been through three verses and two different sources outside of the Bible that's saying that the Jews was black, that Christ was black, that King Solomon was black, then what color was he? He was black. And shouldn't nobody tell you nothing different? Keep going, because he, he tells you even how black he was again. Keep going. As the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. Look not upon me because I am black. There it is again, not because I'm black. Keep going. Because the sun hath looked upon me. He said, I'm black. I've been in the sun. Keep going. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyard. But my own vineyard have I not kept. So, so he was black. Like, don't nobody else get blacker and blacker for being in the sun but black Hispanics and Native Americans. Right. When your oppressor gets in the sun, he burns up. Right. They turn red. Right. And then when you, if you touch them on the arm, they scream because it hurts. Right. Right. And you mean to tell me that the, Mo High, the Most High loves that? Right. that? So he loves them so much that when they go into the elements, they start to, to, to get destroyed. Right. Really? Okay. Right. Well, the Bible is saying different. The Bible is saying that the, his chosen people, they had color. His chosen people could be out in the sun. His chosen people looked just like him and had woolly hair. That's our, that's our ancestors in this book right here. If you could, brother, drop that and get me um, Ezekiel chapter 1 and, and start at verse 5. Because we're going to get some more color in this book. Keep going. As a matter of fact, drop that. Give me Jeremiah um, 14, 14 and 2. Right. We're we just going to stay on black. Because y'all don't understand how important it is, the brainwashing that they did to show you that we are not the people in this book. To show you that they don't look like you. Because if you don't think that you're God's chosen people, you're going to act like you're not God's chosen people. You're going to do the things that God's chosen people wouldn't do. But if you read this book and realize this is you, and realize how important you are, and realize that you actually have rules and regulations that you're supposed to follow, that you actually have to love your brother and not fight with him or try to kill him, just because he stepped on your Jordans in the club, or because uh, uh, you thought your girl was, was looking at him. And when you stop that, that stops any type of, any, any so-called black-on-black -black crime that you think exists, that stops that. Because now I know that, hey, this, he's God's chosen people just like I am. He looks just like me, which in turn means he looks like these prophets in this Bible, That's right. which in turn means that we are God's chosen people. Right. And the only way you're going to learn that the right way is if you come into the ISUPK. Uh, go ahead and read that for me, brother. Jeremiah 14 and 2. Judah mourning, and the gates there are language. Judah mourning, and the gates there are language. Judah is the so-called Negro here in America, the so-called black man. And Judah was mourning back then, and we still mourning now to this day. That's why we are out here now. We're trying to help our people and save our people because our people are hurting. Our people are mourning. And we're mourning because we have an oppressor over us who is merciless. That's why we're mourning. And it said the gates there are of language. Our gates are our leaders. And we have some of the weakest, softest leaders you'll ever... It, if you want to see a, a, what our gates are doing, look at Dwayne Wade. That's right. That's what our gates are doing. That's right. Our gates, are, they are destroying any type of manhood that we could have. That's our. That's what our gates are doing. You want to look at our gates? Look at Bishop. What happened to Bishop Eddie Long? That's what our gates are doing. They are molesting our little boys instead of trying to save Black Hispanics and Native uh, Native Americans. Right. That's what our gates are doing. Instead of our gates, instead of our so-called Christian pastors, 
trying to uh, uh, help the Hispanic brothers on the border from from Trump's destruction. Right. Instead of doing that, they're in the office with Trump taking pictures and smiling, looking like cool. Right. That's what our gates are doing. Keep going. They are black. They are what? They are black. They are black. Now, like I said, we're going to stay on that word black because color is all through these scriptures. Now, that's something I'm going to read. I'm going to get this brother to read. And that color means something. That's right. That color means just, just because we say we black. If you look at my skin, I'm brown. Black doesn't just mean, oh, he's a dark skinned person. We black because we're in a low state. That's why we're black. We're black right now. In a low state in America, we're second, third, and fourth, and fifth class citizens. We don't have anything. We don't own anything. We're just down at the bottom, trying to live and trying to survive. And we're going to read this. It's a book called From Babylon to Timbuktu. It's a, actually a, a really good book. I wish more, more people would read so they can read this. And what we're going to get out of it, again, we're going to get this word black. So like I said, we keep harkening on what the color was because it's so important that in history and in the Bible that we show who these people are so we know how important we are. As soon as we learn how important we are, we're going to change how we do things. Read that for me, brother. You can start, start right where that bar is. In the year 65 BC, during the period from Pompeii to Julius, it was estimated that over one million Jews fled into Africa. And what he's reading about right now in this book is this is what Christ predicted would happen. This is before Christ died, he said that they was going to fall on Jerusalem. And Rome did fall on Jerusalem. They destroyed it. And what we did as, as what the Jews always do, we, we had to leave. We had to flee into other countries so we could survive. Because our, again, our oppressor is merciless. The things that, if you look this up in history, the things that he did to those Jews that stayed back were so disgusting and vile. And they're still doing those things to this day. Keep going. Flee from Roman persecution and slavery. And what? And slavery. So again, we were slaves back then.
then when a righteous person dies, it can confuse you because you don't exactly understand. You know, you thought, wait a minute, if you're righteous, you live forever. That's not the case. And it's important that it's not the case. And I'm going to tell you why in a second. That's not the case. We'll pull this precept to show you. Read it one more time. He pleased God and was beloved of him so that living among sinners, he was translated. Go ahead. Verse 11. Yes. Translated means changed. So now he has a body with a heart that has a limited time span. He's born in the world with a heart that cannot last. But because he loves the Lord, he's changed. He gets a new heart. And right now, somewhere, there's a baby about to be born from, from someone on his father's side. And that baby is going to have a brand new heart. A brand new a heart that's been translated, been changed. A brand new heart. That brother, he worked, think about how, what the work he did with that weak heart. As strong as he was, and all of the camps he made, all that time, his heart is doing this. Boom, 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 trying to push and pump blood into his heart. And every week he's in camp. Every week he's next to you. And his heart is struggling to beat. And he's here. The righteous, sometimes they're translated for this reason. Keep going. Verse 11, yea, speedily he was, was he taken away? Well, how? Speedily. Quickly. Was he taken away? Quickly was he taken away. Just, he just is walking and he falls asleep and he wakes up in the maternity ward. Right? He's gone, then he's back. I stood 10 toes down in these streets, whole ground in these streets, streets. Roll around the city with the pound in his feet. How to make this my last stand? and try to uh, uh, be a part of this world or be a part of this nation because this nation doesn't allow black men to do this. That's, That's right. right. They don't allow black people, period, black, Hispanic, or Native American Indians to think like this. This is how they think, though. If you go to a white Christian church, they think that white people are better than black people. Right. Back in the day, they used to have uh, white churches. The white people would sit on one side and the black people sit on another. So you could come in and God loves everybody, but we don't love you enough to sit beside your black ass. Mm. So sit over there. I mean, this is this ain't this ain't nothing new. Like there's still sundown uh, uh, cities in Alabama. There's still sundown cities in Mississippi. Y'all, does anybody know what a sundown city is? Do I gotta explain it to anybody? You, go ahead. I don't know what it's saying. You don't know what it is. Okay. So you want to explain to him? Go ahead, True. You better have your black ass in the house by sundown. Damn right. When the sun <laughs> is down and you black and you out, you get lynched mm. or you mm. get beat. Or you get tortured, or you go missing. If you're a sister, you get raped. Right. If you're a brother, you getting dogs sicked on you. They throwing you in the back of the truck. Ain't no telling where they're gonna find you at the next morning. Uh, Madison, North Carolina. Uh, what is it? Ten minutes from where I grew up. That's what, that was known. That was a well-known sundown city. Mm. Well-known. And to this day, uh, the city right next to it, Eden, North Carolina is one of the headquarters for the KKK. And that's right here in North Carolina. Go ahead. Too lucky, sir. That's when you will wake up the next morning. Well, when they wake up the next morning, they'll find you commit suicide by hanging yourself or the tree you're going to kill. Right. right. And you know the crazy thing about that is that's been happening. And it hasn't just been happening in North Carolina. It's been happening in Georgia and Alabama and all the other so-called Bible Belt states. Right. And, it's, and it happened in New York. They found somebody hanging in uh, Central Park. And in LA, mm. like don't think you safe because you out the south. 
Right. Your oppressor hates you no matter where you at. Like, that's that's right. a, that that is a fact. They hate you when you at work. They hate you when you at home. If you not around them, they gonna try to figure out some way to get around you so they can hate you. Right. right. <laughs> and then they talk about how they don't want to be around you when they're around you. So I mean, it, they just hate your guts, man. Um, you got that for me, Mr. Uh Hold that. Read, read Terry Crews's uh, quote for me real quick, cause y'all y'all need to hear this this uh, this night. Go ahead and read what you got. Con one con. This is Terry Crews on Twitter. If you are a child of God, you are my brother and sister. Right. I have family of every race. <laughs> Whoa. Good. Hold no. on. He said it started from the top. <laughs> it started, please started from the top. This is Ted Cruz on Twitter. Right. If you are a child of God, you are my brother and sister. If you're a child of God, you're my brother and sister. Hallelujah. Keep going. I have family of every race. Of what? Of every race. Brother. We do not have family of every race. <laughs> right. <laughs> Keep going. Creed and ideology. Creed and ideology. So you just family with anybody these days, huh? Right. So it don't matter your belief, your creed, your ideology, go ahead, true. I mean, uh, officer, so like... Well, he basically just said he's a spiritual whore. Yeah, that's exactly mm -hmm. what he's saying. Give him a hand. That's exactly what he's saying. <laughs> I'm, I'm a positive to say right. is what he's saying. And you know what's so heavy about that? That's why um, he was able to, as big as he is, he was able to be, be grabbed in the crotch <laughs> by a, uh, a, a oppressor in front of his wife. Good night. And he stood there and looked at he said he said himself, he looked at his wife mm. like he couldn't believe it. Nigga, why are you looking at your wife? The man who grabbed you in the crotch is right there. What what is what's your wife supposed to do about it? Good. She looking at you like trying to see what you want to do about it. Imagine the the imagine what she was thinking. Like this is who I'm like as big as this man is, this is what I married. That right. man just grabbed him in the private and he Took it and looked back at me. Good night. This is why you can't have these men leading you. Right. right. Like, man, that's anyway. Uh so so was that the end of that? Nah. Uh -uh. Keep going. We must ensure Black Lives Matter doesn't morph into Black Lives Better. Why 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 is that so bad that Black Lives Matter doesn't morph into Black Lives is better? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. But him? But for him, because his wife is white. <laughs> so, <laughs> there could be one big reason. What's another reason? Why Why would a celebrity not want Black Lives Matter to morph into Black Lives Are Better? Go ahead. Because they'll lose money, sir? It, it, that's it. Right. right. That's right. This, this part, in this kingdom, talk, what, 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 what people in the world don't understand is that when people... When black people uh, uh, become famous and they get money and they, they do movie roles like playing homosexuals, which he's done, I think on three occasions, uh, when they when they do things like uh, comedy shows and he's been on Wild Night a couple of times, him and his friends, you know what I'm saying? They these types of people, they can't afford to not shuck and job. They can't afford not to love everybody. They cannot afford to stand up for black supremacy. Right. They cannot say that black people are better than white people, even though white people act like they're better than us every day. They can't do it. Mm. If they do do it, they, just imagine if we took over all of a sudden like that. Who the hell would Terry Crews be? Right. right. Nobody. Exactly. Man. Nobody. Right. So he has to make sure that white supremacy stays in place, which we all know this country was built off white supremacy. Am I telling y'all something you, we don't know? Nah, nah, we know that this country was built off white supremacy. We know that uh, uh, everything that's in place, the judicial system, the way the prison system works, this is all still white. We all seen documentaries, even outside of the truth. We all sit, done, done listen to this person, watch this, watch that. We all know that when you go to prison, you, you a slave, you working for you know 25 cents, sometimes nothing, making clothes and stuff for big companies. All this, we all know this, and we know that it's filled with black and Hispanics. We know slavery is still real. When you go work at your slave, that's why we call it a slave. You're getting pennies while there's somebody who's about to be the first trillionaire. Right. Like, really? Why he need a trillion dollars? But if this empire falls, somebody who has, you know, a couple million like Terry Crews is not going to have a million dollars. 
and then he's just gonna be another nigga. And he right. don't wanna be another nigga. Right. Like Nick Cannon, he don't wanna be another nigga. We saw what had all they all they all they said Nick Cannon was like, hey, no more wilding out. He said, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh wait a minute. <laughs> I apologize to every Jewish uh, uh, white man that's ever lived and ever, ever lived, ever. That's all they had to do was take Wild and Out. They ain't even take the Fox show from him yet. Right. But because he apologized, Fox said, hey, we don't see nothing wrong with it. He apologized. You know, he can still host, uh, what's it called? Mad Singer. Yeah, uh, Mad Singer. <laughs> man, Nick, Nick been shucking a job for a minute, boy. <laughs> so he hosts that show. It's another show he hosts. What is it? You Got Talent? Terry Crews hosting that now? Good night. <laughs> I don't watch it. I don't watch it. Man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It was a show where people had talent and Nick was the lucky. What was the show that Gabriel Union tried to sue for sexual assault? Because Terry Crews was on that with her. I thought that was the best. Who got talent or whatever? Maybe. I don't know. I, Gabriel Union, I despise. I can't mm-hmm. watch anything. But anyway. Um, you got the scripture for me? This is why black supremacy is okay. Read that. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. Now hold that real quick. And this is why the Jewish man calls himself Jewish, and that's why he won't get his title back to the real people. Keep going. For thou art in holy people mm-hmm. unto the most high thy power. Uh-huh. The most high thy power hath chosen thee to be a special people. Unto himself, above all people. Above who? All people. Mm. Above some people. All people. Above all people? Brother, you reading that out the Bible? Come on, come to So the Bible is saying that he chose us to be a special people above all people. So what's wrong with black supremacy? Terry Crews. Right. We all we all children of God. But right there it's saying that he chose a certain particular group of people to be above all people. So what's wrong with I don't get it. Good. Go ahead. That's a direct cut to what he's saying. To damn right. Terry Crews right. saying he love everybody of all creeds and all nations. But the most I just said that we was a special people. Just said it. Good night. Not special people. And and ain't just say we was special. What else did he say? We was above all people. Above all people. Above. We ain't just special. <laughs> we been, and, and look, it's like your sidebar. And me and Shabai Yala was talking about earlier these milk scriptures. I told you I had one. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I had one. But it, the, the, those types of scriptures, uh, to us, we hear them all the time in UPK. Right. But those, those are, that is a bedrock UPK scripture. That's right. You know what I'm saying? We are above all people. But somebody coming out of the world, they might not know that scripture even exists. Right. They might not know that the Most High picked them over all people. So we have to read something like that, especially when a Christian says something so stupid as we're all children of God Come. and uh, black lives matter Come. and turn into black lives are better. Go ahead. The lie is that particular quote was his second quote. The first quote he said was, we need white people to help us fight this because we don't want white, um, we don't want it to turn into black supremacy. Uh, find that quote for me, oh, if you could. Please find that quote. And while he's finding that quote, um, you got your uh, you got your Bible? When y'all got your Bibles? Um, both y'all do? Uh, um, get me the book of Nehemiah, chapter 13, verse 21. Because we're going to keep going. While he's finding that, we're going to keep going into why, uh, what, what type of personality the Most High has. We already know he's a man of war. So let's see what the prophets were saying. Let's see what the prophets was doing. Let's see how they was moving. What was going on? I guarantee you that uh, it wasn't, you know what I'm saying, what you thought it was, what you think it was. I guarantee you they weren't soft. Especially like uh, not Nehemiah. Now, now I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Nehemiah was, uh, if you ask me, he sounded like Shabbat Yala. <laughs> <laughs> and if you know Shabbat Yala, and after we read this, you're going to understand what I'm saying. You got you got the quote. Come, come. Yeah, read read the quote real quick, and then we're going to how Nehemiah was defeating white supremacy without white people creates black supremacy. Mm. Well, once again, what's wrong with that? Good night. We've been living under white supremacy since we got to this disgusting country. Go ahead. 
Equality is the truth. Oh my God. And to like his sure he also is. says he posts America's Got Talent. Oh man. Well, once again, they both shut me down. Go ahead. So, like, we got a question online. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris Williams the second said, how can I get more knowledge? Um, well, you're getting it right now. Uh, Chris Williams, what, ask, what city are you in? And uh, we're going to go ahead and get you in class. Is this a, this a brother? Yeah, it's not here, brother. In Gastonia? Come oh, on. brother. We right here in Gastonia right now. Every Friday at 7 o'clock, brother, please come on in. You know what I'm saying? We we waiting on brothers like you. Yeah, we looking right, for that right, knowledge. Right. He you see, know what I'm saying? It's a lot. He said he had the slavery right now. Oh, yes, the slave. Hey, no sweat. Um, Can you put um Officer Abraham's number in the chat? Come on, come on. Yeah, he going to give you a number. Call that number, and we'll get with you. We will get with you. Um, You got Nehemiah? Chapter 13, what verse, sir? Verse 21. Kind of Matter of fact, start at 16. Because we're, we're going to get a little context on the backdrop. Go ahead. Turn out of one kind. This is the book of Nehemiah, chapter 13, verse 16. Uh huh. There dwelt a man of Tyre, also therein, which brought fish and all manner of ware, and sold on, and sold on the Sabbath unto the and children. He, whoa, 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 slow down, buddy. <laughs> you say he did what on the Sabbath? And sold on the Sabbath. Are you supposed to be working on the Sabbath? Lot, sir. All right, keep going. So this is this is the backdrop on why Nehemiah is about to get so mad. Keep going. And sold on the Sabbath uh -huh. unto the children of Judah, and in Jerusalem. Right. Verse seventeen. Then I contended with the nobles of Judah, and said unto them, What evil thing? What evil thing is this that ye do? And profane the Sabbath day. He said, what evil thing is this that you do that profane the Sabbath? Like, why are you doing this? You know this is wrong. During Nehemiah's time, Israel was going through all kinds of hell. He like, you know what we're going through. Why are you doing this evil, bringing more evil on us? And, and again, that just goes to everybody else in Israel. Okay, so right. let's, let's, let's say like, uh, let's stay on, you know, already. Terry Crews. Why are you uh, going to wear a dress? Terry Crews, as big as, as big and black as you is, you gonna put on a dress? As big and black as you is, you gonna dance the Tupac talking about how you want him on a movie? As big as you is, you gonna uh, play in a movie called White Girls where there's two black men dressed up like white girls and you wanna sleep with the black man who's dressed up like a white girl and then you don't get mad at the end of the movie when you find out that he's a black man or a man, you get mad at the fact that he was black, not a man. But that he was black. Go ahead. This one. What? Can't, can't he screwed the white yeah, boy. he did. Yeah, he screwed the white boy. On the same movie. <laughs> so why do you keep continuously bringing this evil upon Israel? Because you you in the forefront when you were acting. Everybody seeing you. I'm gonna tell y'all a story. When I was in um when I was in Esau's military and I was stationed in Korea, um, what was this, 2013? This is the picture that everyone around the world has of niggas in America. They think we all rap like Tupac. I got called Tupac so many times. It's like, <laughs> they think we all rap like Tupac. They think we all play basketball like Michael Jordan. And they think we all have guns and we all are very dangerous. They were scared to death of anybody who was black. You could be small, skinny, tall, short, it didn't matter. As long as you was a nigga, they were scared. And it wasn't Africans that they were scared of. It was specifically niggas in America. It's a true story. And I, I used to ask them all the time because we used to have to be in teams with them. I, uh, they called them Katusas. And I'm like, so, I'm like, well, like how y'all, what do, what do y'all think we do? Like, y'all think this and that? Like, what do y'all actually think we do? Oh, wait, well, yep. Yeah. On TV, like, we just always see y'all with guns, and, like, we think y'all all have guns, and y'all just, like, I'm like, what? That's what they think, though. In other countries, that's how they, that's how they see niggas in America, if you didn't know. Sidebar. <laughs> Keep going with Nehemiah. Turn out of one kind. Verse 18. Did not your fathers thirst, and did not our, our power bring all this evil upon us? Then and right, I, stop right there, right there. Didn't our fathers thirst and didn't our power, Yahweh, 
Didn't he bring all this evil upon us because we was doing stupid stuff like something as simple as selling selling and working and making people work on the Sabbath? Right? All right. Something that simple was was getting us messed up and keeping us in, the, in captivity. After we was already getting punished, you want to keep getting punished because you want to make a little side hustle on a Saturday. Man, sit your ass down, man. Right. right. And go ahead and jump to verse 21. I'm going to tell you why this reminds me of this about y'all. <laughs> kind of one kind. This is the book of Nehemiah, chapter 13, verse uh -huh. 21. Then I testified against them. Whoa, whoa, read this loud. Start from the beginning, read this loud. Kind of one kind. Verse 21. Then I testified against them. Uh huh. And said unto them, Why lodge ye about the wall? If ye do so again, I will lay my hands upon you. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. He, what, did, what did the prophet Nehemiah say that he was going to do if they did it again? I will lay my hands upon you. He's going to lay hands on you. These men, in it, man, the men of the Lord are not soft, man. Damn yeah, right. Follow these laws, or Nehemiah said he's going to put hands on you. <laughs> right. Now, I don't want nobody to get it twisted. If you come into UPK, we ain't saying we're going to you know, whoop your ass if you start going off. But what we are saying is that we're not soft. Right. And the right. men in the Bible are not soft. This whole blonde hair, blue eyed Christ, that 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 is not, you know, that he loves everybody and he was letting little uh boys and girls sit in his lap like a pedophile and right. doing all this other stuff like that. That wasn't Christ. That wasn't Christ at all. A matter of fact, I'll show you a verse of Christ. And then see if Christ was just as hard as Nehemiah. But give me uh this for you. Give me Luke 19 and 27. Y'all gonna love this. I love this verse. I absolutely love this verse. And once again, we're gonna get we're gonna start getting on Nick Cannon. Now, Nick Cannon, as everybody knows, you know, said the Jews was black, the white people uh were the true savages for the stuff that they did to us, which is absolutely true. Right. You know, uh uh four years of a Holocaust is not comparable to 400 years, and yes, it was 400 years because slavery started in the 1400s. It did not start in 1619. Right. It started in, uh, I think, 1451, and then it was really established in 1498. So 400 years of slavery is absolutely, it, I mean, like, go ahead, go ahead. Like five hundred years, we call it Yeah, yeah, five hundred years, and 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 that's just that's just this. Come on, come on. If you go back further than that, we have been slaves to the Muslims already. That's how we got right. the slave markets in the first place. The African tribes and the Muslims got together, tore down our our little king that we had built up in Africa. Right. And then we we got in the slave markets. Then little nasty Africans sold us to Europeans for gold and guns. Right. Go ahead. That's heavy what you said, because when we fled out of Israel into Egypt, that's why we uh, fled to the, the West Banks or the West Coast of Africa, fleeing Islam or Muslim persecution. Right. Because we, we was just trying to get around people who had, who damn near, you know, had the same skin color as us. Right. Have you ever seen a Nigerian or, or a Ghana or a Ghanaian? They got the same skin color as us. Right. You know what I'm saying? They, I mean... I don't think they, of course, like, if, you, if you've if ever been around Nigerian or somebody from Ghana, they don't look like niggas in America. Right. right. But they got the same skin color and skin tone like us. So if we wanted to go hide somewhere, if we, I mean, Europeans can't tell us apart. They they just see, no, oh, yeah, he black. Oh, he got dark skin. So we went and hid a bunch of them. We hid for, shoot, a thousand years. And then the Africans got tired of it because we started flourishing in they, in, in they land. We right. started flourishing. So they got jealous and they got mad and they teamed up with the Muslims and then they put us in slavery and then they sold us to white people and then they sold us to more white people. Go ahead. They couldn't even, if, if, if Christ was a white boy, a blonde haired blue eyed devil, he wouldn't, He was running from the police. They'd have found him a long time. Oh ago. yeah. As yeah. <laughs> soon as he stepped into Africa, he, he might would have had to turn back around. <laughs> if he was blonde haired, blue eyes, he was better hiding off in Italy. God, he was like the, God. <laughs> it was. I mean, Egypt and you know Nigeria and Niger and all those places is not the place for him to hide. If he was blonde haired, blue eyed, which wasn't. Right. So, uh, 
You got 21. Uh, uh, keep going with 21. Start from the uh, from the top. Oh no no! Take your time, cause we gonna uh, we gonna really drive this one home. Why wow, he's getting that again? You got Luke. Okay. Go ahead and start with that. This okay. is the book of Luke, chapter nineteen, verse twenty-seven. Oh, the question: What color is these words in? Red. So this is Christ. This is Christ speaking. So this is the personality of Christ. We already read in Exodus fifteen and three that the Lord is a man of war. Right. So let's see how Christ was. I mean, this is this is out of Christ's own mouth. Go ahead. But those my enemies. Those my enemies. So he got enemies. Go ahead. Which would not that I should reign over them. Stop right there. Hold on. So Terry Crews lied again. So, you know, Christians believe that Jesus is God and God is Jesus and the Holy Spirit mixes in there somewhere. So, does God love everybody? Uh -uh. Why does Christ got enemies? Why is Christ saying that he has enemies? And what he's about to say next is so pivotal. Start, start at the top. Go ahead. But those mine enemies. But those mine enemies, uh-huh. Which would not that I should reign over them. Uh-huh. Bring hither and slay them. And do what? And slay them before me. No, hug them. Slay them. You sure? Slay them. And kiss them. Slay them. Everybody loves everybody, though. Slay them. Good night. Why are we killing people, Christ? It's, he said, come bring them before me and mm. slay them. He ain't say, hey, hey, hey. You know what I'm saying? You know, do you? No, Christ said, I want to see it. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 that's Christ. That's he nice. said, I want to see it. Bring them before me and slay them. The ones who don't want to be up under me. Bring them here. Let me see them die. Go ahead. I like it, man. I want them to see me. You, you damn right. right. Imagine, <laughs> imagine you talking, you've been talking big, big, like you just you you know what I'm saying? Been saying I'm trying I'm trying to hold my language as much as I can. Like <laughs> imagine you just been talking the most crap about a king, and then his servants find out they grab you and they take you to the king. The king looking at you like slam, <laughs> like, and you're like whoa wait whoa whoa, and there ain't nothing you can do. You're gonna be looking him in the eyes while you get your head cut off. Go ahead, uh, officer. God, this how you know Christianity. Is a crock of you know what, right? Oh, yeah. Because they tell you to love everybody. Christ didn't love. Christ said, "Slay him." He, 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 they showed him some love by right? slay him <laughs> it, it, before me. Bring him before me and slay him. That's hardcore, ain't it? Damn right, it is. Uh, Damn, that's more hardcore than Nehemiah. You got the Nehemiah back. That's more coming. hardcore than Nehemiah. Read that again, in Nehemiah. This is the book of Nehemiah, chapter thirteen, verse twenty-one. Uh huh. Then I testified against them. And said unto first, them. First of all, he testified against them, which is what we do every Saturday across the nation. That's right. Like what right. we do on the, online every day. Right. We testify against people who do stupid stuff. Right. When you smoke weed, we testify against you. When you eat pork, we testify against right. you. Right. When you uh uh when you beat on women and talk about going and sleeping with with women of other nations, sleeping with oppressive women and uh, uh, what what other kind of women? Eight, for some reason they. I think Asian women are attractive. I don't understand that at all. That's a that's surely a dog. But <laughs> so they they talk about doing all this disgusting nastiness. But what did Nehemiah say? Then I testified against them. Hey, I testified against them. That's keep right. going. And said unto them, Why lodge ye about the wall? Mm -hmm. If ye do so again, I will lay hands on you. He said, Why you sinning, man? It's to the point where if you sin again and put this nation at risk, I'm going to beat your ass. Right. Like, what? That's not soft. What was you about to say, Drew? I was about to say, he gave him a check. Oh, yeah. He right. gave him a check, check of their life. You know what I'm saying? I guarantee you they ain't go out there no more. Nehemiah, the prophets ain't nothing to play with, man. Go ahead. It, now, in today's time of Christianity, they tell you if you sin, you're going to hell. Right. They tell you if you sin, you're going to hell. But what is sin? It, go ahead. Transgression of the law. Transgression of the law, <laughs> which is everything a Christian does. Right. <laughs> Every single thing a Christian does is a transgression of the law. Even for going to church on Sunday, uh, worshiping that damn Christian pastor along with the white Jesus and right. the cross and the holidays. Yeah, the holidays. Go ahead. And they have no clue we, we're in hell right now. And they, right. And you damn, give him a hand. <laughs> he keeps my glass on you. <laughs> 
I be telling people this ain't working. They, they, it blows their mind because, because I mean, they can't dispute it. But I'm like, we in hell now. Like, what are you talking about? Like, hell's right here. Right. We in hell right now. We, we don't run shit. What do we run? You barely run your house. Right. <laughs> you can barely run your house with that dragon you living with. Go ahead. Nice. Try to run away from the police when they come for you. Try to, yeah, you can try to. That's about the only running you're doing. Right. Shoot running when you're working out. Running right. when you're running from the police. <laughs> running when your boss tell you you got to hurry up at work. That's when you're running. Right. We ain't running nothing on this earth, man. It's like it's like uh, um, Officer Ryan. Officer, uh, give him a hand. Officer Ryan, five thousand. That's my nigga right there. But Officer Ryan said that. Uh, how did guns get in Chicago so so much and there's no gun stores in Chicago? Right. Mm. He's in Chicago. He lives in Chicago. He grew up in Chicago. He's from Chicago. Hey, I think he did a little stint in, uh, in uh, Baltimore. But, I mean, shit, it's Baltimore. That's just, just as bad as Chicago. Right. right. Then there's no gun stores in Chicago. So how guns get in Chicago? We don't own companies and freight. And that. Did y'all hear about the um, about Amazon? Getting in trouble with the sex trafficking? Oh, a lot. Wayfair? Did y'all hear about that? Did you, did you see it? Uh, sis saw it. Y'all, hey, look, y'all got to get up on your game now. <laughs> <laughs> got to get up on your game now. <laughs> lucky, sir. I, I saw the Wayfair, but I didn't see the Amazon. Yeah, oh, yeah. They was buying the little kids off the Amazon website, too. Come on. Yeah, the, ca the cabinet that you buy for $12,000. The cabinet named Marcus, you buy for $12,000. Come on now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. nice. Go ahead. Bezos just made 13 mil in one day, wasn't it? 13 mil? 13, 13 mil million? In one day. Uh, I, I think it was billion. Oh, it's a lot. <laughs> <Good. laughs> it was billion. It was billion. Good night. But uh, in, in one day. How you do that? Legally. I ain't never heard of that, y'all. Organs. Mm. It's, organ. it's more than just organs. Everything. And imagine what they do to them before they get to the organs. Like, good night. Mm. And it's the world we're living in. And you trying to tell me this ain't hell? Imagine what they going through when they first get picked up. They don't know what the hell about to happen. Mm. And then the next thing you know, you in an auction room. Getting auctioned off like a slave. Mm. And they mean to tell me this is supposed to be God loves everybody society? No, man. I can't wait for this kingdom to fall. Right. right. That's, that's right. Cannot wait. Give me, uh, we're going to see... We're going to see how hardcore Job was. Give me the book of Job, <laughs> chapter 29, verse 17. You heard this one, True? Job 29, 17? Mm-hmm. I'm sure I have. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you have, too. We're going we to touch upon it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's time, time. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. I thought so. We're going to see how hardcore Job was. Once again, we're just showing how... Hardcore the prophets of the men were. They not they wasn't your Christian pastors, they wasn't your Terry Crews, and they wasn't your Nick Cannon. Right. Keep going. Go ahead. You you got it? Okay. Go ahead. This is the book of Job, chapter 29, verse 17. Mm -hmm. uh, I came I fought that it. Come. Come. And I break the jaws of the wicked. <laughs> Good night. Yeah, you know, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. <laughs> let's 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 just think about that for a second. Nick Cannon? So <laughs> Uh, matter of fact, let's go back to Terry Crews' big ass. So, <laughs> the man grabbed your prophets. And what did Job say he did? I break the jaws of the wicked. Now, that's pretty wicked. Good like, to night. grab another man's private in front of his wife. Oh. That's assault, sir. <laughs> is it, I mean, is everybody understand that's assault, right? That's sexual assault. Right. Yeah, at that point, you got to, you can defend yourself and you can get away with that. Damn right. Now, now we don't we don't condone violence, but we definitely condone you defending yourself. That's right. right. In here in the UPK, like I don't know what they condone in the Christian church, you know, because so many kids get molested. But what we do condone here is that you protect yourself and your wife. Imagine if he can grab his crotch. Imagine what he might allow to happen to his wife. Right. Good. You supposed to love your wife like you love yourself. That's right. right. So you don't love yourself for your. Your manhood not to get grabbed, but you going go. What did Job say again? And I break the jaws of the wicked. I break the jaws of the wicked. And he said, "Yeah, no, I'm no, no, <laughs> I'm slaying that." Boom, your jaw broke. It's over. Hey. Keep going. 
and pluck the spoil out of his teeth. And pluck the spoil out of his teeth, man. Like he knocked the teeth out. Damn, Damn man. <laughs> Come on, man. Like that's it's, it, it, did I not say it's gonna be kind of you know clear, pretty simple explanatory? Like I break the jaws of the wicked. All right, well, you know, don't be wicked. Go ahead. Somebody tell that to Kirk Franklin. He got oh, man. Saying. <laughs> <laughs> Why you gotta bring him down? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's too busy stomping, man. Right. <laughs> Kurt Franklin, boy, I tell you what. When it's, oh man, that's it's it's damn near disgusting to watch that man in the interview. Right. It's uh it's 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 pretty gay. That's, uh, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Drop that. Give me Ephesians, um, chapter six, and uh, start at start at verse ten. Ephesians six and start at verse ten. This is this is something else for uh, for Nick Cannon. We're gonna stay on these celebrities a little bit because we have to get it in everyone's head that these celebrities are not our leaders. That's right. They get paid to do things. They get paid to say things. That's not what a leader does. A leader does something because it's right for his people. Right. right. A leader says something because that's what his people are supposed to hear. Right. Not because it's what they want to hear. But it's because that's what they're supposed to hear. And he grabbed, you know what I'm saying? He grabbed his grabbed his, his, his balls a little bit and said a little something. Oh, man. And then what'd he do? He put that car in reverse quick, didn't he? It ain't take two, it ain't take two days. And then got the nerve to say that black people turned on. You turned on black people. Right. That's what you did. And that's how we know you're not a leader. I don't give a damn what movie or uh, Dr. Sebi documentary you think you're about to come out with, and I guarantee you that got a bunch of bullshit in it too. Right. right. Like, you kidding me? You backpedaled on that? Imagine imagine somebody watching the documentary. Let's, let's just say, I'm not saying it happened, but let's just say, oh yeah, Dr. Sebi did find a way to cure AIDS. You think Nick Cannon gonna put that shit in that documentary? Uh-huh. All they gotta do, all they gotta do is say something to him and be like, hey, yeah, put that in there if you want to. Oh, oh, oh no, Master, I ain't. Jeez, let, me, let me take you, man. He gonna wipe that out so fast. Man, come on. Ain't no telling what that documentary is about, but I guarantee you it ain't about nothing that got shit to do with shit. Right. And it was a documentary that Nipsey Hussle was doing before he got popped. Right. Who, if, if y'all didn't know, he's uh, Hamlet. Right. Right. He's not Israel. Go ahead. This is the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 10. Mm-hmm. Finally, my brethren. Be strong in the most high. Be what? Be strong in the most high. What, he, what was he trying to tell Nick Cannon? Be strong in the most high. Terry Crews? Be strong in the most high. Will Smith? Be strong in the most right. high. I'm saying these three names because these are the three most recent uh, d- um, disgraces to black men <laughs> that I can think of. Right. Deshaun Jackson. Who? Deshaun Jackson. Deshaun Jackson. What's the other one? Uh, Stoudemire. What's it? Amari Stoudemire. Amari Stoudemire. Yeah, yeah, Stephen Jackson, but uh, Monty Stoudemire is the one who actually got into it with our UBK brother, ain't he? Right. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and Charles, oh, man, look, Charles Barkley's been a woman for years. <laughs> <laughs> He's been a woman for years. But Stoudemire actually got into it with our UBK brothers and saying he was doing hate speech. Right. Again, like, we just read what the Most High said in Deuteronomy, so it ain't hate speech, it's just what the Most High wants. Go ahead, keep going. And in the power of his might. In the power of his might, uh uh-huh. Put on the whole, verse 11, put on the whole armor of the Most High. You can't put on the whole armor of the Most High if you're not in the UBK because you don't know the scriptures. Right. Right. The only way you can put on the 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 whole armor of the Most High is if you know these scriptures and then you know how to equip yourself. That's right. Like, if you're a Christian, what what they going to tell you to do? You got to love everybody. If you in the UBK, we're going to tell you, hey, you can't go around your enemy like that. You can't take your family around your enemy like that and expect everything to be okay. You're going to end up like the black girl who, uh, who what was it, last week she went with her with her white friend. It was seven white friends of hers, and she ended up dead and beat. And don't nobody know how it happened, but she right. was at their house at the sleepover. Right. But she ended up dead and beat. Right. Yeah, <laughs> hang out with your enemy if you want to. Keep yeah. going. That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Right. Verse 12. Against the, uh, what way? Against the who? Wiles of the devil. Who's the devil? The oppressor. The oppressor. 
the the so called uh, white man or so called Caucasian. That's right. right. That's right. We're flesh, but we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle not with what? Against flesh and blood. We wrestle not with flesh and blood. And this is something that Nick Cannon learned the hard way. They didn't kill Nick Cannon. Did they? Uh, no, they, they didn't kill him. Go ahead. But against principalities, uh -huh. mm. against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. <laughs> nice. what, what, so, so Nick Cannon found out what? Start that part over? What did, what did he find out he was wrestling against? Against principalities. Right. Against powers. Uh huh. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. He found out that the, the Jewish man who circumcised babies and then sucks the foreskin off with his lips and does that nasty stuff, that's who runs everything. Right. Those are the men you can't talk about. Go ahead. But then they get mad when you say that they run everything and call you anti-Semitic. Of course they get mad when you say you, they run everything. Because if no. they run everything and everything's, you know, messed up, then who you got to blame? Yeah. You got to blame the chief. Caucasian race, which That's is right. the so-called Jewish man. You got to blame Amalek. And if you blame them, then you know, what do they bring up? They always bring up this one thing when you try to blame them for something they did wrong. What do they bring up? Somebody raise your hand. Don't let the officer over there. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know what the Jewish man brings up. Come it's on, the man. only thing they really known for. Go ahead. The Holocaust. You damn right. Give my hand. <laughs> the Holocaust. Right. Uh, now I'm a lie? Lie, lie. What did they bring up when Nick Cannon said all the things that white people had done to us? Yeah. What did the Jewish man bring up? <laughs> the Holocaust. The Holocaust. <laughs> like, come on. Speaking of the Holocaust, you know they just found a 90-something-year-old Nazi this week, and he's on trial. <laughs> all the time. For <laughs> he's on trial for I think they said. Uh, Accessory to murder for over 200 people from 1944 to 1945. So what? Go ahead. And he living? He's living. Okay. In a wheelchair. They rolling him in a wheelchair in court and he got a COVID mask on. Good. Nice. I'm not lying. I saw that today and I was like, this is not to be a joke. We got to forgive y'all, but y'all can't forgive him for something they did for four years. And it happened to us both before it. And but we gotta forgive y'all. Yeah. We gotta forgive about us. Yeah, we, uh -huh. you know, you know, yes, yeah, you know, that's how it is. That's how you know who run everything. Mm -hmm. Tell, you know, you step on their shoe, you dead. You know, you rape, rob, murder us for four hundred years, and and take our children, mess us up, and then when, once we think we free, flood our community with drugs and guns. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Make sure that we know that gang culture means that you go against each other, so we shoot each other and kill each other, sell crack to each other. You know, there's been a sh uh, shooting in, in Charlotte almost every day for the past two months. Every time I turn on my Facebook page, somebody is shot in Charlotte. It's like, come on, man. But you can't say that, you know, they put us in this environment and they made us like this. They just own oh, y'all animals. Who made us the animals? We've been watching y'all kill each other for years. What was right, the Civil right. War about? Right. What was the Revolutionary War about? Right. right. That, was, that was oppressors killing oppressors. Caucasians killing Caucasians. Mm -hmm. Right. That's all it was. Go ahead. World War I, World, World War II. Exactly. All the World Wars was about oppressors killing oppressors. You know, they even had uh, in the uh, what is the, uh, Civil War, they even had red and blue on them. Mm -hmm. Like, we got all that from our oppressors. Like we, at some point, we gotta get the picture. Go ahead. Even before that, in slavery, they put us against each other, made us fight each yeah, other. Yeah, man, they go fights. They, I mean, we, they been making us kill each other. They had, they had sell out slaves like Nick Cannon and Terry Crews go find. Um, imagine, as as athletic or whatever as Terry Crews is, he played in the NFL for for a short stint, right? Right. And he was actually um, halfway decent. Imagine them getting him because he's a sellout. And you escape from your plantation. And then you got this big burly nigga <laughs> running after you to get you back to the master. Good night. And he grab you, tie you up, drag you all the way. I, I got a master. 
And you like, nigga. <laughs> Man. What are you doing? Speaking that Hebrew. <laughs> you know? Like, come on, man. Yeah. Uh, read that from the top. This is the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 12. Mm -hmm. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We don't wrestle with flesh and blood. I keep going. But against principalities. Right. Against powers. Right. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness against, in high places. Against spiritual wickedness. Y'all know what, what spiritual wickedness is? You do? What is it? Damn that, right. That is a perfect example. That's a perfect example of spiritual wickedness. Somebody give me another example of spiritual wickedness. Mm -hmm. Islam. Islam. That's another perfect example. Uh, white death of Salakia. <laughs> uh, oppressors calling themselves Jews and they are not. That is a huge spiritual wickedness. You know what another one is? The, just to make it simple, smoking weed. Right. right. That's right. spiritual wickedness. That's right. Uh, um, getting dreadlocks. That's spiritual wickedness. When you had a spirit of the Most High and the spirit of your people, you're not going to do other things that other nations do. That's right. Because when you do, then you're being wicked. You're being spiritually wicked. When you sleep with other nations, you're being spiritually wicked. Right. Why would you want? Why would you want another nation woman? Why? Why would you? Yeah. Why would you be a woman and want a uh, uh, a so-called white man? Yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. So lucky, sir. For my followers on Facebook, can you please enlighten them that zodiac signs are also spiritual wickedness? That is that is complete spiritual wickedness. If you, the, the, it says in the scriptures that, that, does anybody know what the scripture says about the, the moon and the stars? What, the, what they're used for? Go ahead. For times and seasons? Exactly. Give them a hand. They're used for times and seasons. They are not used to figure out what your attitude is supposed to be. <laughs> That's right. They're not used to see what mood you're going to have. They're not used to see why you didn't make any money last month. Right. You didn't make any money last month because your ass was sitting at home. <laughs> right. All right. Go ahead. Right. Imagine uh, Christ, you get on the cross, but well, you know I'm Leo, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Leo's knocking y'all's heads, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Ima imagine that. Like, come on, man. Like, no, it's, you know, it's, you know, I'm a, I'm a Libra, so I got to. This the month I'm supposed to die for everybody because the, the sun and the moon and the stars lined up in just the perfect way for me to, to no, forget about it. Come on, <laughs> yeah, forget about it. Please, forget about it. And it, it's sad because our, it, it's, it's mostly our sisters that suffer from that. And man, y'all gotta leave that alone. Right. Like, right. like the, if you really pay attention to it, and I, I found this out years ago, if you look at it, and then look at another sign. You know, every every month they just change out. You know, how, what sign is going to act like what? You know, sometimes it's the same day. Two signs acting the same. It's like, well, I thought you know the signs are different, but for some reason the Leo was acting like the Scorpio, and the Scorpio has a bad attitude. But I thought the Leo had the bad attitude. Right. And the Sagittarius said that they was the bad attitude, having you know sisters, and, and you couldn't handle them, but. For some reason, the Libras said that they got the bad attitude. And so who got the bad attitude? So everybody just got a bad attitude. Go ahead. Maybe you're just a bitch. Yeah, that's, <laughs> but that's what it comes down to. What it comes down to is that uh, what, what happens with a lot of sisters is that, especially in this kingdom, is that they get a lot of ways to find excuses to act like a bitch. That's so right. They find a lot of, did y'all see the video of the sister, um, Putting the gasoline in the man in, in right. the man's yeah, right. 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 Uh, Jeep, <laughs> and she yeah she put filled it up with gasoline the inside while the window because the window his windows was down it's hot outside he had a black Jeep so he had his windows down she pulls up with a face mask on mm. start pouring gasoline in the windows you know what's about to happen and then she gets a lighter sets the inside on fire and of course because the windows are open. The fire shoots outside, and she flies up against the other car. Swift judgment. Swift judgment. Right. And then I saw today that she got arrested. 
Say she got arrested, she's in jail. Time out one time. <laughs> like, sister. <laughs> and you know what she was mad at him about. Blow my mind. What was she mad at him about? Raise your hand. Blow my mind. Go ahead. Another woman. He had, a, he, had a, he had more than one wife. Good night. Sister, if that's your problem, <laughs> just, like, come on, man. Mm. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Is it, it, it's worth blowing your eyebrows off. Good night. You know, the little uh, mustache hair that you had that you don't want nobody to see. It's worth blowing all that off. <laughs> your brother ain't done nothing to you, and you're going to try to blow his car up, and you blew up. That's a damn shame, man. Uh, give me uh, the book of James. Yeah, this is also for Nick Cannon. Give me the book of James, chapter 4, and we're going to start at verse 7. If you're upset about something, yo, seek counsel. That's right. We got counsel in the UPK. I've gotten counsel plenty of times. The counsel works. The counsel saved my marriage on more than one occasion. Uh, get counsel. That's right. I, ain't nothing wrong with counsel. If you're a strong man, you'll get counsel. If you're a strong sister, you'll get counsel. Right. You got that for me? Don't come. Go ahead. This is the book of James, chapter 4, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Oh, I came out got it. Come. God. Submit yourselves, therefore, to the Most High. Do what? Submit yourselves, therefore, to the Most High. You ever heard of a weak man submitting himself to a greater cause? Oh, uh, oh, la, 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 la. Yeah, I was about to say, I ain't never heard of a weak man submitting himself to a greater cause. I've heard of, I heard, you know what I'm saying? I've heard of some strong men commend themselves to a cause they right, thought was right. greater than them. So if the Most High is telling you to do something, submit. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Do it like Nehemiah. Be so so zealous for that truth that you almost want to beat somebody's ass. Right. Don't do it. But, you know, have that same zealous, that same zealous feeling. Go ahead. Resist the devil. And do he what? Who? Do what? Resist the devil. Resist who? The devil. Who's the devil? Like, you damn right. Bro. Did you say it loud? <laughs> <laughs> you damn right. Damn damn right. right. <laughs> Keep going. And he will flee from you. And he will do what? Flee from you. This is something Nick Cannon didn't learn. Good night. If he would have resisted the white man, he would flee from him. Have you heard? Let, let me ask you a question. Out of all, they, they, because they was messing with Colin Kaepernick for a minute. Right. And all he did was take a knee. He didn't say nothing about the Jews. When's the last time you heard something about Colin Kaepernick? He's still doing the same shit. He still ain't playing in the NFL. You know what I'm saying? He's still walking around with braids. Right. He's still doing his blackity black thing and, and really not paying white folk no attention. You know what white folk ended up doing? Go ahead. Signing him to a Disney deal? They gave him money. <laughs> and then they left him alone. Please. They gave him money and left him alone. Go ahead. No, I got a few questions. Uh -huh. For Nick Cannon. Yeah, go ahead. The Book of Luke, chapter 14. Verse 28 and 29. Uh-huh. For which of you intended to build the tower, sit us not down first and count us the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it. Mm -hmm. Lest happily, after he have laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him. All that behold it begin to do what? Mock him. To do what? Mock him. To mock him. Y'all get that right. Right. Now go uh go back to uh what we was reading. The book of James, chapter four, verse seven. Then watch how that tie go ahead. No, Submit. Matter of fact, go to verse verse eight. Verse eight. Draw nigh to the most high, and he will draw nigh to you. Right. Yeah. You right. Keep going. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Cleanse your hands, ye what? Ye sinners. Okay, keep going. And purify your hearts. And purify your hearts. Keep going. Ye, ye double minded. Now, what's your, what's your heart? Your, your it's mind. right in front of. Oh, where's your hand? <laughs> it's right. It's right in the verse. What's your heart? Not you. <laughs> Go ahead, young man. <laughs> Go ahead. Your heart is your mind. So you damn right. right. Did it just say it in the verse? That's right. right. Said, oh read that verse again. Draw nine to the Most High. 
and he will draw nigh to you. Right. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Right. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. You do you what? Double-minded. So cleanse your heart, you double-minded. He's telling you right there, your heart is your mind. That's right. Do you think with your heart or you think with your mind? Your mind. So do you need to cleanse your heart or you need to cleanse your mind? Your mind. So if you're going to be double-minded, what you're using? Your brain, right? Right. Yeah, he's right telling right. you, like, when the Bible says your heart, it's talking about your mind. Right. Right. Anytime you, oh, I just feel it in my heart. No, it's something you think, you dummy. That's how you, that's how you think it. Go ahead. That's why people say, oh, I remember your number by heart. Exactly. Right. Do you remember a number in your heart? La -a. No, you don't. <laughs> so you see how simple that is? Like, it, and he even told you in the verse. And 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 that's a, and the reason that this is another cut to Nick Cannon is you see how double minded he was. God, how he was blackity black one minute and then he was wiggity white the next. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I ain't never seen I ain't seen nobody flip flop in less than twenty four hours. Wow, right. that was pretty bad. <laughs> that was pretty bad. Like, come on. Good. Uh, I mean, he was talking when when Griff was there, mm. and he took the Griff down, the Griff uh, interview down, by the way, mm. and put the, the the white Jewish man's uh, uh, interview up. Yeah, he took that down. Don't don't look surprised, young man. You know, <laughs> he won't keep it that up. Go ahead. It's a lot good. When Griff was on the show, I mean, he, his aggression towards another brother. Wait, well, you know the Adam plus the Adam equals right. Eve, and Eve know how to in between. But right, when he right. might come on there, he was, uh, uh, just, I'm sorry, uh, right. may I, sir? <laughs> right. You know, it just shows. On his, on his knees the whole time. On his knees. Uh-huh. And it just goes to show he's a weak brother. Weak is, he can't right. eat us. Weak is all get off, man. Well, when Griff was on there, he, you know what I'm saying, he, he did y'all, did y'all see the interview, like the clips of the interview when he, when Griff was on there? Kind out of one kind. Like the, the, the rah, rah that he was right. just spewing out. I said, man, Nick done changed from Nickelodeon. <laughs> when he was on Nickelodeon, kind of, yeah, please see me. <laughs> I said, he done changed. He done, grew, he done grew into a man. You know, he been trying for a couple of years. You know what I'm saying? He been, he done gone to school and he started wrapping his hair. And you know, he's wrapping his hair like a woman. Right. Wrapping his hair and he started, you know, studying this and blackity black this, blackity black that, black power, blah, blah, blah. Now it's I, I'm gonna be honest with you. He gotta take them fists down. He gotta take them fists in the background down. <laughs> like, bro, who, who's whose fist is them? Is there a reason that the outline of the fist is white? I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, it's a little now. It's a little suspicious. <laughs> but it's like, come on, man. Like, because he was talking big. He was man. He had, you know, what I'm saying he had big cojones in, when when Professor Griff was there. He was. You know, what I'm saying the six protons and the six electrons and the six uh, rotons. Hey, that's where the six 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 come from. That's the black man's body. Man. <laughs> Alright, nigga. No, it, it took one one Jewish man's tweet and and the loss of one job for him to say, "Whoa, this ain't the life. I ain't about this life." You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. He went from trying to be a Black Lives uh, Black Lives Matter leader to a LGBT community leader. <laughs> right. This is what Black Lives Matter <laughs> is anyway. You know, the, the, if y'all didn't know, the leader of the Black Lives Matter is uh, is three LGBT Black women. Right. Right. And if you go on their website, it don't say his story; it says her story. <laughs> right. Y'all didn't know that, did you? Uh, if you, know, one if, if you go on the website, right. you'll find out a lot. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, they don't like you black man. Yeah, but, uh, moving on. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so, but anyway, but, but it, it just, it, it boggles my mind the way celebrities backtrack on things for money. Right. And that's why it's a perfect precept for when Christ said, you know, it's harder for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to get into the kingdom of heaven. Right. right. Everybody knows that precept. Right. Right. That's it, it, damn right. It's in Matthew, um, and that's. I mean, you see that. You see that so often. It's almost. It, it's almost. Uh, what's the word? Expected. Right. You know what I'm saying. It's it, it's expected. Like there's no other way to put it around. Like you you expect a celebrity to backpedal if they ever come out with something that is supporting black people. Right. 
What you about to say? Oh, um, well, I was gonna say Nick Cannon with the backpedaling. He went from um, being rah rah with Professor Griffs mm -hmm. to apologizing for the information mis that he was misled with Richard Griffin. Now, <laughs> now, <laughs> <laughs> now, now, here, here's the thing that pissed me off um, about one of the things that he said in his in his tweets that he was putting out, where he, because you know, he apologized like three times. The first apology, he just apologized for hurting the Jewish community. The second apology, he apologized for what he said and hurting the Jewish community. And the third apology, he was like, everything I said was a lie. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I learned from, uh, what did he call them? It was a certain name that he called the black scholars. It was a certain name that he called black scholars. It was. It wasn't ignorant, but it was. It was nigh too mm. ignorant. He called. No, it no. It wasn't though. Those were way too soft. It pissed me off mm. because at the end of the day, one West is what brought out that blacks and Hispanics and Native American Indians are the true Jews. Right. That's right. So who was he talking about when he when you called them ignorant? You talking about the leaders of of our school? Right. Right. You talking about our our leaders? The leader. You talking about Commander Junior Hunter? Right. So to say that you learn from some ignorant people, uh, some stuff that you now you you feel like it wasn't true, and you gonna study.